Hey guys, I know it's been a long time since I've actually done any kind of a video here on YouTube, and lately I've been indulging in a, in a kind of a new hobby. It's not really a new hobby, really. It's kind of an old hobby. Uh, but, um, you know, I've been using fountain pens for a couple of decades, and I'd use one, I'd put it down, I'd use one, and then I'd put it down for a while. I'd run out of ink, so I'd go for a while without having a fountain pen, and then I'd go order some cheap ink, and it would work, and it worked great. Why? Because I had a pretty darn good pen. I had two fountain pens when I first started. They were awesome pens. I really enjoyed them. One of which was just a, an El Cheapo that I had. And I went ahead and uh, had gotten this one, I think, at a Walmart. I don't even know what the brand name is. It's just a little cheap cartridge pen that I had used for a while. And uh, when I stopped being able to buy cartridges, I stopped using the pen. And then eventually, I bought a $40 uh, Waterman. And I didn't even know what it was. It was like a Phileas, um, as it turned out. Actually, Excellent pen. It eats any kind of ink I put into it. It's been very reliable for a long time. And uh, so as of late, what I've decided to do, though, is I, I bought a few more pens. I went on eBay and I looked around at pens, found some inexpensive ones, and found that, okay, they're not so bad. Wanted to find out what else there was because I was looking to get a halfway decent pen. And so I kept ordering them. And then I started to do some research. I started in enjoying uh, having a variety of pens. Uh, and, and I made a few mistakes along the way. Uh, if there's a newbie mistake, I've probably made it so far when it comes to inks and pen ownership and, and pen use. Um, and one of the things that I had done is I went ahead and ordered some. Now today, it was like Christmas all week long for me because I had some purchases that have been on my wish list for a while. A Waterman Karen. Um, I love Waterman pens and this one here is no different. Look, this one here is so sweet. It's got an inlaid nib and uh, I filled it with some uh, really good Waterman ink that I just recently bought, a Serenity Blue. Writes so smooth, it's incredible. Every Waterman pen I've gotten, I've got three of them, uh, they all write very, very well. Uh, just today, three pens showed up. Um, I got myself a um, a Mont Blanc uh, 32 that showed up in the mail today mail for me is like Christmas um, and I got this one particular pen that um, I had never seen before but it was a platinum p-l-a-t-i-g-n-u-m it's a it's an English pen uh, and I uh, picked that up and it arrived in the mail today it's a silver line model and I filled it up with like a Robert Oster um, maroon ink and it actually writes halfway decent. You know, it's um, it's a little different than I than I thought. I didn't know what to expect. But uh, you know, whenever I get a new pen, I love to be able to sit and play with them. And this one today is the one I wanted to talk about a little bit. It's an Esterbrook J series from the 1940s. This is the second 1940s pen uh, that I've ordered. You know, when you look at vintage pens, you kind of expect uh, that um, they're going to be old. They're going to be possibly ratty, some maybe in bad condition, maybe inexpensive, maybe not. You just don't know. Well, um, you know, there are a couple of names that come to mind. Esterbrook um, is not uh, the top, what you'd think, but maybe um, Schaefer would be one that would really come to mind. Um, and I actually bought a Schaefer. One of the things I don't really like, I don't like the lever action fill on pens. I, I just, it's just not me. I'm just not into lever action so much. But um, I went ahead and bought this one because it came as a set with a, uh, with a matching pencil. And what I had done was uh, I bought it for like $17 delivered, and it came in a box uh, like this, and the box said uh, had a, a writing uh, on it when someone had given it as a gift to somebody else, and it had like 1947 was the date. Uh, 1947, 24th, um, on a Tuesday, um, something about a dance they went to. But anyway, um, and when I got this thing, yeah, the, the description was that it was in great condition. Well, physically it looks like it is, but on the inside, you know, there's a sack. One of the things that I had to learn, because I didn't know about this kind of a fountain pen uh, ink filling system, was these little sacks. And all it is is a, a little rubber bladder that sits inside the pen um, that uh, is where the ink goes in. Now, I'd been used to either cartridges or converters. I'd never had a sack filled pen before. And I did some research online and I found all about um, how they work. And this pen wouldn't work for anything. I mean, I couldn't get the, the nib section out to be able to change the sack. I had to soak it in hot water and I finally got it apart. I finally uh, was able to order a sack and some of the sack cement that you need. One of the things in the articles that I had read about how to do it, it didn't mention though putting talc 
on it uh, to be able to put it in. But anyway, I got I got it together. Um, I didn't do a really good job of it. it. Was my first one ever to monkey with, and. Um, so I still have maybe some work to do in the future, but I got it writing. So I finally, after all that work, finally got that one writing. Yeah, I thank God for small victories, uh, and I celebrate small achievements, and that's exactly what I did there. Uh, but today, I ordered uh, this Esther book that came in the mail today, you know, and um, it's another lever action. And like, ah, that's a lever action. But I figured, what the heck, you know, it'll give me something to do. Uh, it'll give me the opportunity to play with it and figure it out some more and maybe do a better job restoring it than I did the last time. So I look at the pictures on eBay and I got this pen fairly cheaply. It wasn't all that, that expensive. Um, and uh, it was like less than 10 bucks delivered. And the sack inside was totally destroyed. I mean, it said it um, it, it probably needed rest restoring, and, and they were right. But when I got the pen, surprisingly to me, it was in better condition than I thought it was going to be. It's a gray J model from the 1940s, um, and uh, you know, you uh, the cap unscrews, and you've got this nice little nib here, um, and. When I looked up the nib number, um, I said, well, gee whiz, you know, it, 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 the nib number on it, looking at my uh, computer over here, I actually have a spreadsheet that has um, Esterbrook nibs on it, and this one said it was like an accounting, um, a fine writing nib, and I went, nah, gee whiz, I didn't know necessarily, I probably should have looked that up before I bought it, uh, but and I'm looking at the, the nib number here is a 2556. Oh, I, personally, I like medium nibs. I'm not much into fine nibs. Um, it's like the um, the Mont Blanc that arrived is a fine nib, and I'll show you what it looks like. Um, I, I'll tell you a little bit about my philosophy about writing samples here in just a little bit. But anyway, uh, today I spent a little bit of time with this thing, and I was able to get the old sack out, clean it out. I was able to put the new sack on, which was fun, um, and let it dry, and I put some ink surprisingly it did fairly well it inked up a lot better than I thought it was going to um, and so I went ahead and I put in um, some uh, what did I put in um, I put in some uh, noodlers bad black moccasin ink is what I put in it so um, and I was very surprised this little pen here wrote very smoothly from the 1940s probably been neglected for years probably hadn't been used because that old sack was all crusty and hard um, I was able to get it out in one piece compared to the other pen that I had that came out in dust <laughs> and I had to work on it but anyway really impressed with this pen I was very surprised uh, so let me tell you a little bit um, about what how I look at stuff for writing samples what you see here this is my office i work from home for a living and so this is where i earn a lot not only do i earn a living this is where i do recordings i hadn't done recordings in a long time because i hadn't done my tv show in a little while and i used to do recordings in this very office until i got this desk set up um i, I hadn't been doing anything so this is this is um these are my new digs so um just to get, show you a little bit writing samples I love watching reviews online of various pens. It helps me plan. It helps me get ideas for my next pen. Uh, there's a lot of great guys out there that have got some excellent reviews. Um, and if you look for them, you can find them. I, if I try to name them. I'll probably miss some. And I don't want to be disrespectful to them. Um, but um, just for comparison's sake, um, I like to do in something I'm going to use to write. For instance, since this is my office, you know what? This is a notepad, and I have notepads stashed all over my office at my desk. And I'm not going to put on Tomoe River paper. I'm not going to, uh, you know, do some fancy uh, schmancy um, Rhodia paper right now. Number one, I don't own any, and number two, I'm more practical when it comes to this stuff. I'm not going to take notes on Rhodia paper um, or Tomoe River. This is where I work, so I'm going to use notepads that I picked up. Up, let's say from Homewood Suites all right well this is the writing sample that we did um, on the uh, the Esther Brook a little bit when I put in that nice ink um, and it wrote better than I thought it would a lot smoother uh, to give you an example some of the comparison um, you look at some of the stuff that I did earlier you know I've got my uh, I got some new ink in the other day, so my pen of the day was going to be uh, an old Jinhao 650 uh, for that day. So I went ahead and inked it up, and that was the Blue Serenity in it. Compared
compared to this Waterman Corinne that I'm holding right here, fantastic and a big difference betwixt the two inks. Um, my Lamy 2000 is my pen uh, of the day today that I was using. So that's a Diamine um, Onyx Black. Well, my brand new pen that I showed you earlier, that, that red pen, uh, that is the, you know, the Plagignum Silver Line. Uh, it's got a Robert Oster Maroon in it. And, uh, you know, this is how I do my writing samples. That's how I want to see. I just have an old notebook that ended up uh, somebody cast away and I picked up. My Mont Blanc writes um, in a blue black uh, that I got from uh, Diatramentus. Uh, and it's an okay ink. Um, it's just, it writes a lot finer than I like. That much finer nib. And uh, so this one here, the Esterbrook. This was supposed to be a super fine nib uh, that you use for accounting and, and stuff like that, but it writes more like a medium nib uh, than it does uh, a, a fine nib, and I'm actually pretty cool with that. Here I was looking up new nibs, because they're, they're Esterbrooks I really like, because they, they screw out and you can screw them right back in. Uh, they're really easy to, to change, and there's a ton of them, and I found some online that I was gonna purchase until I started writing with it. I was like, wow. This thing's pretty smooth. So um, Esterbrook J's, you know, if you're gonna try vintage pens, look for them uh, online. I found this one on eBay. Uh, I buy a lot of stuff on, on eBay. I've been on eBay for like 15 years, for, since 2001 I've been a member of eBay. Uh, you know, five, five to 600 purchases, um, that at least that I've received feedback for. Uh, and, um, you know, Sometimes you get burned, sometimes you don't. You know, at first I was thinking I was going to get really burned when I got the Schaefer, uh, but it took some work and it gave me the opportunity to get a little bit of knowledge. Uh, so after getting discouraged, I picked it up again. Then I picked it up again and I kept tinkering with it and I started reading some more. I started learning a little bit more and I said, I will not be defeated. I'm going to get this sucker writing. And I finally did. That writes extremely fine, much more so than I like, but it writes. And I'm going to start using it um, in my rotation. Uh, but this Esterbrook J, just, um, it's, it turned out to be a lot prettier than I thought it was going to be. This, this, this gray uh, finish on it, uh, really impressive, beautiful uh, writing nib. It writes so smooth, I was shocked um, actually how well this nib has held up. So I don't know if it's still an original uh, 1940s nib or not. But anyway, uh, just wanted to throw that out. This is my new hobby. Um, been picking up pens here or there. Um, and I've got, um, I actually have to get more pen storage because, you know, here I've got, um, well, I took some of them out for this. And I'm overflowing into other uh, storage. Um, and I'm picking up parts and pieces here and really investing in and enjoying in the hobby. Fortunately, it doesn't have to be an expensive hobby if you don't want it to be. I even picked up pens that were fairly inexpensive to give away to see if people like fountain pens. I gave, I've given some as Christmas gifts this last Christmas. So anyway, um, this is my first video. I know I'm kind of rambling on a little bit, but um, anyway, I, I, I'm really happy with this black, uh, bad black moccasin uh, noodler's ink. Uh, this is just a little sample that I picked up for like a buck and a quarter from Goulet Pens. Um, and they've been pretty good. Can't uh, recommend them enough. And other than that, folks, uh, maybe sometime I'll, I'll share a little bit about my experiences with this one and uh, maybe a little bit with my new Mont Blanc. And I've actually got some more coming in um, that I've purchased. And uh, I'm really excited to believe it or not, you know, I got my uh, my old cheap pen that I picked up for just a couple of bucks at a department store. Uh, wouldn't write and didn't have any cartridges. Couldn't find one a cartridge to fit it. I finally did. Finally got it writing. And so, of all my pens, this one probably has the most sentimental value to me. And even though it's not worth a whole lot, but only because this is my first. And this is what got me hooked on the idea of writing with fountain pens so many years ago. So, hey, thanks for watching. Bye bye.